you know, raising children in this generation? Do you think it's very challenging? Do you think it's quite difficult? We want to hear from you. Our topic tonight is raising children in this generation or in this age. Do you think it's very challenging, difficult? You know, what is your opinion? What do you think, you know, um, about our children, you know, in this generation? We want to hear from you. Please do put your opinion in the comment section and we will read it out. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, what do you think? You know, you know everybody keeps saying children are the future generation. They are our future. We need to invest. We need to do this. We need to make sure that we nurture them. We need to make sure they take after us. You know, but what is going on with our children in our, in our generation today? What do you think? Have you come across you know, people asking such questions or people saying, oh, I don't know what our children, you know, of this generation have turned into, you know. How do we handle this puzzle? Have you ever come across this? Yes. Mm. I think I think I want to start this response with what happened to me before mm. we had children. You know, I was um, were trying for a baby and it was taking a while, isn't it? And then um, one day I had a thought in my head. I was just like praying and I was talking to the Lord and just lying on my own. And I said, maybe it's not even safe to have children. Maybe I shouldn't even bother trying, you know. And as I, as I was brooding on that thought, I thought about my friends that were Christians that already have children. I said, what about them, you know? And then as I was brooding about it, I said, maybe it's not even a good idea to have children in this generation with the amount of evil in the generation and all that and the lord said something that changed my life he said it's not yet like the day of noah hmm. that in i said what do you mean he said in the day of noah it was down to one family that did something right yeah you know so we are not yet in a situation where only one family is following the lord hmm. we hmm. still have yeah christians or people that want to do things right may may be smaller in number in comparison to what is going on but there are so many people somewhere that are not um well known but they are following the lord because i think i don't know who was the prophet in the bible that said i'm the only one left I'm elijah. Sister elijah and the lord said there are still 70 700 that have not bowed down to the prophet of Baal. so the first thing i want to say is that in this generation yeah like someone rightly typed in the chat it's very difficult or challenging to raise children in this generation having said that i must say that it's not yet down to one family it's not yet as bad as the days of noah where literally everybody did the wrong thing except noah and his family so there are still people secretly there and there following the lord and because there are people so following the Lord, I am very strongly of the belief that the Holy Spirit is still working and the Holy Spirit is still there helping us to raise children. And the Bible says something that is very interesting. It says, um, it says, where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds even more. What does this scripture mean? It says, where people are actually doing everything they like and they don't care about the impact of what they are doing, even in the middle of that, what the grace of God to do the right thing is still there, you know. So, um, I personally, I felt quite unworthy to raise a child. But after I had children, it was amazing how the Holy Spirit was teaching me how to deal with the children, the different ways to deal with them. So I think it is challenging. That would be my first response. But it's doable. It's yeah, but I, I think, uh, you know, challenging, yes. Okay. Don't you think that the culture is coming into the, the whole situation of raising children? Because sometimes the parents want their child, you know, or their children to grow in certain ways. Okay, based on their belief, 
but the society where they found themselves is saying the otherwise you know the the, the opposite okay and then that could trigger you know the 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 process of nurturing these children in accordance you know take for instance if they are christians you know we know there are discipline when it comes to training children you know encouraging them to go to church encouraging them to read their bible encouraging them to pray in the morning before they set for the day encouraging them to be respectful towards one another especially the the elderly people not insulting them or using a vulgar words all kinds of things that are very naughty you know so that element of discipline is there as christians you know but when you look at today especially in different cultures which i said i think culture play major roles when it comes to raising children there are some cultures where you go you don't discipline them you know you have to leave them to just do whatever they like okay you know it's up to them what they like is is up to them what they want to do you know whatever they want to do they can do it they can pick up a phone and they can do anything you know so therefore the parents don't have minimal you know efforts to add into that you know, training of nurturing these children to grow in the well of the Lord. But you mentioned about Noah, okay, in the Bible and his children. I believe confidently that during the time of Noah in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 5, okay, that the word that, you know, we are living today is quite similar, if not worse, as of that time. But Noah was able to manage his children, and they were saved. They were not behaving like those who were destroyed, you know, through flood. Okay? And I think if the parents, when it comes to raising our children, if the parents can play, if not, at least 85%, if I may use that, mm. you know, when it comes to raising children, I think that will be more, you know, more powerful okay and then the children will be in accordance but the challenges we have which you mentioned the key word is challenging you know it is some parents don't even know what they should do mm. okay I, I some think, parents I don't think, even know think, what they what they could do yeah. because i think it's really important you know to get the the background and then also to pick up some factors and then we now talk about the practical aspect of it. And then we now give like application what, you know, we should do to remedy what is happening now. Because we could see so many things that, you know, coming out from lack of that discipline, mm -hmm. that's nurturing, which the scripture says in proverb, which I think is really important for me to read it, to set the tone. And then I will leave you to, to say, uh, to continue. Proverbs chapter 22, which I believe is quite a familiar Bible passage to so many people. You know, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it said, Train a child in the way he should go. Did you see the word train? Is That is what the society has removed completely from the parents. So many parents don't even have that right again to train. And then when it talks about training, it, it training involves discipline. Okay, training involves nurturing. Okay, because for you to to you for you to graduate or be, or get a job, you need to go for training. So there are sacrifices. You know, there are time spent. There are things to pay. You pay money. You pay your school fees. You know, you sit in the class. You sit for exams, and then you be able to come up with in a flying colors to get certificate before you start a job. Okay, before you get that job, say train a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, in other words, what you have nurtured that child to become in life, even in the old age, those things will not disappear. It will be there with him. Okay, and he says when he's old, he will not turn, you know, from it. Okay, so you don't give what you don't have. So when you, if you grow up in, in the ethos, Christian ethos, you know, in the foundation of God, I'm telling you the truth. 
even when you get old, those things are still there. The reason why I'm still serving God today, still on fire for him, the energy is there, is what I learned when I was really, when I was little, in Sunday schools, in church, because my parents took me to church. I grew up there and I encountered Jesus and I am the instrument, the vessel God used today. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. There are so many things you, you raised that I want to really buttress. First of all, you talked about Noah being there with his family and not allowing the society influence his family. Mm. You know, you, it, it's very powerful. He didn't lock them with chain. Mm. He didn't uh, hide them away. The children were seeing what was going on. Mm -hmm. But then the, the father was telling them, this is the right thing to do and this is not this is the wrong thing to do and he was saying there was judgment you know people that had that have studied theology your colleagues that have done theology one of the things they come to tell us is that between the time god told noah to build the ark and the time when the flood actually came it took over 100 years so Noah was constantly warning the people around him that there is going to be a flood mm -hmm. and they never listened, mm -hmm. you know, they never listened. So, um, but thankfully Noah's children listened to him because he, he kept telling them this is the right path. And you said it, imagine if Noah didn't tell his children, you, you were, you, you're very right there when you said that the parents have a greater influence than even the society so but you also pointed out something that you can't give what you don't have so if a christ if a parent is not does not know the lord how is he going to pass on the knowledge of the lord to the children mm -hmm. there is no way if the patient if the parent has no morals or no christian values mm -hmm. and they are not going to be able to pass that on but i think one of the greatest things that have happened to our society is that we are contracting child training to others. Mm. So we, the child training, the devil has deceived our generation so much that we are leaving our children in the hands of the society and the society are deciding for us how to bring up our children. So for example, I see children as young as six months being taken to nurseries. You know, and, and then I took my children to nursery one or two occasions. I had to, you know, because I had some family situation where I had to do that. But my heart was never to leave that child in the nursery. It was just a temporal thing. But I see people just leave their child from nursery and then they bring them to primary school. They bring them to early school club, bring, leave them for after school club. So the whole day, by the time everybody is coming home, the children are tired, the parents are tired, nobody has time to discipline again. You know, nobody has time to even do what It's not even do. about no time you for know, discipline, but also time for the kind family, of fatherly yes. and the motherly the, the, ten, you know, that, relationship yes. wasn't there because the father would be coming back late and then knackered and tired yes. and then straight to the bed yes. and then the children as well. Sometimes even to do the assignment yes. and the home assignment is even difficult. And it's when you spend time like this, you pick up the character traits that the children are exhibiting. So... The, the, the first thing our society has done this time around is to make us drop these children in schools for so long without mm -hmm. having some family time. Mm -hmm. And the, in fact, I saw something on the news where they were saying they should shorten the summer holidays. Even though time that parents have time with the children, people are still saying they should shorten it. Whereas we're not having enough time with these children, mm -hmm. you know. So and is when we spend time with these children, we're able to impact the virtues. But like you rightly said, unless the person has something to give, you can't give what you don't have. Yeah. There is no way. So I think what I have to say this night, especially to people that are viewing us, anyone that is young and unmarried or young marriage are without children, this is your time to prepare for child raising. This is your time to spend the time with the Lord. So that you know what to do when the children arrive. I know we'll touch some things that we can do to help raise these children here. 
But what I'm talking about is investing time in yourself. What do you really know the Lord? You know, like, for example, when I had my daughter, I kept her in the room, in her room, when she was about four years old. And when I, I off the light and I said, good night, baby. And she said, I, and she was saying she's afraid. And I said, don't be afraid. Mommy may not be here, but the Lord is always with you. Then she asked me a puzzling question that I did not even see coming. And she said, how can I be sure that the Lord is with me? How do I know that the Lord is with me? You know, it was like an instant. The Holy Spirit taught me what to do. I never prepared for this moment, but instantly the Lord told me what to do. So I went closer to her. I said, baby, do you have a heart? And she said, yes. I said, how come you know that you have a heart? Have you ever seen your heart? He said, he said, no, I've never seen my heart. I said, but you know that your heart is inside your body. He said, yes. And I said, when you touch your chest, it goes boom, 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 boom. He said, yes. I said, look, if you look around you, you will see the, 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 the reality that God is always with us. We can't, we can't make the trees grow, but the trees could move about. We can't make the plants grow. The, we can't stop the ocean from moving. But the Lord keeps all these things. This is the evidence of God in all, in all our surroundings. So there are so many things we believe without seeing. And one of them is that we have a heart, but we never see our hearts. We just believe these doctors when they say there is a heart inside us. And they measure our blood pressure and everything, but we've never actually seen our hearts. It's just inside us. So when I said that, I said, so God is invisible. You can't see him because he is God and he's a spirit. Mm. He doesn't have this kind of body. So I wrote an article about that because that was one of my series. I call it Conversations with Mom because I love writing. So, uh, but it was the Holy Spirit that taught me that. And from that day onwards, my daughter stopped being afraid of the dark. She already knew that the Lord is with her. I said, you have to remember whether mommy and daddy are here or they are not, the Lord is always with you. Mm. And when I, when I say to them, I say, oh, mommy loves you, daddy loves you, but who loves you more? You say, Jesus. I mm. say, yes, Jesus loves you more than mommy and daddy loves you. He mm. brought you here and he loves you because he loves you more because our own love is limited. Our own love could even be selfish because it's our own, but God's love is, is just beyond measure. So the point I'm trying to make from this explanation is if I didn't have a relationship with God, when these questions are coming, I wouldn't know how to handle it. So you can't give what you don't have. Mm, mm. So it's important that you spend that time as a young person to prepare for when the children come so that you will have something to give them because they are going to be wondering about life. How did we get here? Why are we here? What are we doing here? What's the purpose of life? Why do we, why do we die? Why is grandma dying? Or why, you know, things like that. These are boggling questions that come up. So if you don't have the answers to these things by knowing the Lord personally, knowing your Bible, then obviously the, mm. you can't pass it on to the children. And God is depending on us from generation. You know, I think it was in Deuteronomy 6. The Lord says, you have to teach your children about me. Mm. When you walk on the road, when you speak, when you do every activity. So in fact, literally God is saying, teach me to the next generation as you breed. As you breed, breed me. You understand? So this is the, this is the powerful thing about passing that legacy on to the next generation. And in fact, one pastor said something very powerful. He said, the next generation is just one. He said, Christianity is just one step from being extinguished. Just one generation from being extinguished. Because when you don't pass it on to the next generation, then that generation cannot pass it on to the next. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a lot to take from this because there are so much going on around us. And I'm sure many of you, all our viewers, and I'm sure... 
you can pinpoint some of these things that we're talking about. You go out on the street, you could see the youngsters, you know, behaving, you know, abnormally. Okay, and you are wondering whether they are they, they have home training, you know. So what you what we see outside is really not how you know children from Christian home should behave, you know, and, and it's really a call for a concern because uh, I don't know whether it's you, but there was a time I was on the street, a boy of I'm not sure, but I'm I I'll I, I don't think that boy is up to a ten or eleven years, you know, you know, smoking vape. Okay, at that young age, you know, where where does he get it from? Okay, and sometimes one of the parents don't even have that time. Okay, that time, you know, for their children, for their own children, there is no time because they were busy busy out there making money but when they come back home there will be no more time mm -hmm. you know to spend time with their children is a call for a concern mm -hmm. remember what we are talking about here tonight how do we raise you know children in this age this generation you know what are the challenges and we have pointed so many of them and we use Noah as example in Genesis chapter 5 how he raised his children even in that corrupt generation you know he was able to raise his children and it's possible even now you can still you know look after your children in the direction God wants you to go despite the challenges the pressure that comes from the society you know, because the pressure from the society is to take away that liberty that you have, you know, to look after your own children. The society is telling you that is not the way to do it. This is the way to do it. Okay? And that is why it's important to look at the model, the footsteps, the direction from the Bible. And look at how we sh should nurture our children. Not this culture telling you otherwise. Not the society or the government telling you what you should do. You have responsibility, you know, to look after your own children. You have that child. You bear that child. And it's your responsibility to look after that child. You don't leave your children under somebody's care to look after. Because you don't know what they are teaching them. You don't know what they are giving to them. You know, but it's your responsibility. Because one thing that some parents don't even know is that on the last day, God is going to ask us a question how we handle the children, you know, he gave to us. Mm -hmm. You know, because we are the stewards to look after these children, to nurture them. Just like the way your parents nurtured you to become who you are today. Okay? And that is our responsibility. But sometimes, you know, we don't get it. You know, we don't get it. I just want to read that Deuteronomy you mentioned because I think it's really powerful. That, you know, um, that um, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay. And it says, these are the commands, decrees, and laws. The Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Okay. And it says, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all these decrees. Did you see that? Okay. Keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you. And so that you may enjoy long life. When you follow the pattern of God, the blessings that comes from it is long life, prosperity. Okay. And then he says, you will enjoy long life. And then verse 3, hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that I may, it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers promised you. And then verse 4, it's beginning to get more interesting here. He says, hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. 
this commandment that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. And then verse 7, impress them on your children. Did you see that? Impress them on your children. You know, as a mark on your children. Impress them on your children. Okay. And he says, talk about them when you sit at home. Did you see the practical aspect here? So we're now moving from background of this topic in a, to move to the practical aspect of it. He said, talk to them, okay, when you sit at home. And then when you walk along the road. So it doesn't stop at home. You have to do it outside as well. <laughs> Did you see that? So when you are training your children, you train them to become instruments that people out there will see. And they will be wondering, who is, whose children is this? Okay, because they bear the fruit. Okay, Christ-like. He says, you will teach them, okay, when you walk along the road. When you lie down, did you see that? And when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Mm -hmm. Write them on the door frame of your houses and on your gate. Okay, did you see that? So that is the commandment God has given to us about our children. So parents, okay, you have bigger responsibility. You don't allow the society to take it on from you. You have a role to play here. Don't leave it, your children, in the hands of the society, okay, to look after your children. You have a role to play here, to nurture these children, this wonderful gift God has given to you in the way of the Lord. Remember the first reading I already said, train up a child the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from God's presence. You don't give what you don't have. First of all, parents, you need to know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. When you encounter Jesus, then you, that's fire of God upon you. You will now transfer it to your children to nurture them to grow in the knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do that, the consequences from these things is that you will begin to see them turning into gangs. Okay? When you look at all these shootings and killing happening, even in UK, on the street, you look at the age bracket. They are not far from 11 years to 16 years. Read the news. Youngsters stabbing one another. These are children that are supposed to know what God says. You don't take away somebody's life. There is precious in God's sight. It's God who created this body, created us. We have no right to get rid of somebody, to kill somebody. You have no right to do that. But these children, nobody is telling them. Okay? And that is why knife crime, name them, knife crime, gangs. You know? And the funny enough here is that these people, they joined the gang from early enough, from eight, nine years. What do you think they know? And they move from that kind of notion to think that killing people is joy mm. or fun. And that is why every week you hear this news on the streets, stabbing, killing, and they are children. Mm. If the parents play their part, that will reduce the crime that we see in our society today. Mm. Remember what we are talking about tonight? Raising children in this generation.